Hello everybody, this is Roger Hansen with Gardening 2018. Today I am going to do my video about um, my garden that I set up. It's uh, actually in the ground this year. It's not like in 2017 um, where we had everything growing in pots and everything. I actually did do one out of the ground like I wanted to. Now before I get started, I'm going to um, read about uh, about planting uh, cantaloupes and what you need to do to, to uh, plant them successfully. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos and I haven't uh, noticed anybody talking about how deep you need to plant them or how far apart, so I'm going to go ahead and put that out. Cantaloupes or musk melons are a delicious, heat-loving fruit with a relatively long growing season, making them especially well suited for southern gardeners. Here's how to grow cantaloupes in your garden. What is commonly referred to as a cantaloupe is not actually a true cantaloupe, rather a type of musk melon. True cantaloupe has a rough warty rind and is not widely grown or commercially available in the U.S. Their cultural and growing requirements are very similar to other melons and they have a nut-like tan rind with sweet orange flesh. The name musk melon and cantaloupe are used interchangeably. We will use the name cantaloupe on this page to avoid confusion. Planting. Amend soil with aged manure or compost before planting. If you are in a cooler zone, start seeds indoor about a month before transplanting cantaloupe vines or very tender. Cantaloupe vines are very tender and should not be transplanted until all danger of frost has passed. If you live in warmer climates, you can direct, directly sow seeds outdoor, but wait until the soil temperatures are warms to at least 65 degrees to avoid poor germination. Plant seeds one inches deep or one inch deep, 18 inches apart, in hills about three feet apart. If you have limited space, vines can be trained to a support such as trellis. Cantaloupes like loamy, well-drained soil. Handle them gently when you transplant. Add lots of compost to the area before planting and after planting. Mulching with a black plastic will serve multiple purposes. It will warm the soil hinder weed growth and keep developing fruits clean. Fertilize when vines start growing. <coughs> Row covers are a good way to keep pests at bay. While, melons plant, while melon plants are growing, blooming, and setting fruit, they need one to two inches of water per week. Water in the morning and try to avoid wetting the leaves, reducing watering once fruit are growing. Dry weather produces the sweetest melons. If you've had an exceptional amount of rainfall during the ripening stage, this could cause bland fruit. Once fruit begins to grow, prune in buds off vines. Your plants may produce fewer melons, but they will be larger and of better quality. Vines produce male and female flowers separately on the same plant. They often begin producing male flowers several weeks before females appear. Don't be discouraged when the first bloom d do not produce fruit. Blossoms require pollination to set fruit, so be kind to the bees. Alright, so I wanted to read that. Like I said, I don't see that too much with most uh, videos that I've seen on YouTube so I wanted to put that out there <clears throat> and now I'll go through and let you see what I 
ended up getting um, with my uh, my crop of cantaloupe. I actually planted uh, peaches, prunes, peach trees, and, and all that. And that's what these were supposed to be, but nothing ended up growing. Peaches, prunes, apples, I did pears. Those were down on the other side. Um, these were supposed to be uh, peaches and pears. Uh, no, peaches and prunes, I believe, or something like that. But peaches is what these are on the top of it. And um, plums, that's it, plum trees. What I ended up getting was a bunch of strange plants growing up. I don't even know if they were really uh, peach trees or plum trees or not because they, I, I haven't learned to recognize them yet. I'm still in the process of trying to do that. I put the plastic over everything and um, it did work out. The plastic works really well. And my family has been doing it for years, so I figured I would uh, do it. And I did it. Now, right here, I planted my cantaloupes. And I'm going to tell you right now, um, there were a couple mistakes that I did. And the one thing that I did make a mistake on is I put them in rows. And I uh, made trenches, basically. And when I did that, I the leaves or the the vines they were going down inside of the trenches, and it was creating condensation. Now these look beautiful at the moment, but later on it starts developing those brown spots on the the leaves. I don't know if that affects the fruit in any way. It didn't for us, but I do want to say that it caused that and. There was white that appeared like mildew on the leaves as well. So I don't suggest making trenches. They said do it in mounds. I could give that a try next year. That might be a good idea. But for me personally, I'm wanting to grow them up, get them about three or four feet off the ground, and do like they suggested about training them to where they grow upwards because we do have bug problems in the area. And this is where I did my pears and my apples and a couple of other things and they just didn't grow. After I planted in uh, May and they didn't uh, grow up in May so I had to replant in June and then they started coming up with that one and I actually want to tell people that because I never heard it, but don't plant just one seed. Put in each hole, plant, put three seeds in each hole. And they talk about uh, cutting off the, the other two and letting the strong ones stay. I did, never did that. I, I've heard people say that it strangles each other out, and not once did they strangle one another out. They actually thrived off of one another. Now this is what happened with the end of the season. Um, I that's the spots you can see on the leaves, and we had a groundhog that ended up going into the um, garden, and it caused a lot of problems in there too. But we did have we had good cantaloupes. We had bad cantaloupes too, but. Mostly they were good cantaloupes. This gardening he got attacked by insects and by the end of the season we it was a race to, for, to get them off the ground before they were attacked by the insects and decided or figuring out when they were ripe. Um, I've heard people say waiting until they pop off themselves and I didn't have the choice there. I had to pop them um, prior to them popping off voluntarily on their own sometimes because it was a race. You can put uh, cantaloupes up on your refrigerator if they're not fully ripe. Wait about two, one to two days and they'll ripen on their own. Uh, you don't have to worry about them coming off the vine at the perfect time. If you have to pull them early 
it's perfectly fine to do it. Just let them sit for about a day or two and they'll, they'll do it. But yeah, this is uh, what I was talking about. I tried to use that tomato thing right there to get them to grow up and they actually were so heavy they knocked that over. And the grass build up, that was because it just, they started growing so freaking much. That's what I'm saying. They, they don't strangle each other out. They thrive off of one another. And it, they literally took over the entire garden. Um, I, I ended up freaking uh, going through a little while where I just <laughs> gave up because there was no way of controlling the growth. And finally, after about two or three weeks, I got out there and started pulling that grass up. This is the plants that grew there. I And like I said, I do not know what these are. If you recognize them, that one right there I know is a weed. I ended up checking that out, but figuring that out. And this is what I'm talking about with my crop. It just overgrew, it, it grew over, took over the entire surface of that plastic. It was eventually growing into the areas where my peaches and or plums and apples and everything else was supposed to be growing. It took up three times the size of its actual garden. So, and I mean, like I said, for the longest time that garden was beautiful. It, it was really beautiful. Like I said before, you know, look around the sides, I finally got out there and started cleaning it up. And with watering, the this year we had plenty of uh, rainfall, so I ended up in, uh, I'd say uh, July, maybe June, June and a little bit of July having to take uh, and put water down for, for those plants, but after that, rainfall took care of itself. Um, they they <clears throat> do pretty well if you you know start them out get them going for about three three and a half maybe four weeks of watering and then after that as long as they get water from the rainfall for at least within three to four days they do perfectly fine and that plastic really helped out on that too it uh, kept them going pretty strong and like I said I mean it stayed beautiful it's just when the bugs and the critters started catching on that, it, that they were there and were growing out that's when we had to go get a guard up next year we want to put a deer fence up around it and maybe you know and, and start getting them to grow um, off the ground about three to four inches. I'm going to post another video with my grow box that I was using last year for um, my condensation experiment and i show you what happened with that. It was elevated like four feet in the air and we had no problems until around August or September when the bugs were getting hungry and they they went after them and it was already too late. But we had some bees and you've seen the little cantaloupe right there starting to crop up. And there was a couple before. There you go. We, we got uh, quite a few um, cantaloupes. We also got some that um, I didn't think would have been good for uh, for keeping. So uh, what I did is I kept those two, and um, I, I'm using those for compost. I'm adding them to uh, the garden for next year and this year too. I have videos of uh, two or a coat that I finally opened up and made into a garden grow bed. Now this is at the end of the year when it was all said and done and it was done growing. I didn't have the heart to tear them all up so I just left them. And um, 
now in 2019 I'm going to get out there clean that up and start over again and this time I'm not going to do the trenches I might do the mounds I'm not sure but I might also just do flat ground and build the fences up to let them grow up the fencing we're still looking at it and seeing what we want to do because I, they definitely need to be off the ground I suggest that with anything now because I mean it is really insane we have problems with insects and we have problems with squirrels so there's no nothing bad about elevating your, your uh, gardens up to where they grow upwards if you can do that work on that because that's the best way to go and that's we're going to have video of that too um, I apologize for not having anything on video about you know whenever I plowed the ground and tilled it and everything because I did have it <clears throat> and what ended up happening was the uh, I had to change over from Windows 7 to Windows 8 and in the process I wiped out my external hard drive and deleted all my video that I had but I did have video of it and even though I don't have that I do have uh, other videos that because I'm working on the yard and I'm going through and I'm going to be making more gardens and I had to clean out a lot of stuff because that's the reason why I really got into the gardening I wanted to revitalize my yard kind of get out there and get all the stuff out of the ground and straighten it out but this is what it looks like at the end of the year I didn't get anything for plants but I, or, or trees and everything but I hope that I do get some next year um, with that I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please like subscribe share make comments give feedback if you have any advice feel free to give some advice in the comment sections we definitely need the help if you recognize some of those plants I told you I didn't notice um, let me know because like I said I, I'm still in the process of trying to identify a lot of the stuff that's in my yard and what's growing and if it's what I want growing or not growing so any kind of advice or tips anything like that's welcome and thank you for watching